Kenneth Andrade is a market master today. He's founder and chief executive officer at Old Bridge Capital Management. Kenneth, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Wishing you, uh, you know, a ha very happy Santeras and of course uh, a very happy Diwali going forward as well to you, your family, your team. Uh, and it's great to have you back on the program. Uh, Kenneth, uh, let's just start with, you know, your take. I mean, your broad view has been uh, that there may not be any big sort of bull market rally here, but whatever happens, we will do a little better. I mean, you know, whatever happens globally, the Indian market, for a variety of reasons, will do a little better, fare a little better. Is that the base case you're working with, Kenneth, as we uh, sort of go into the fag end of this year? Uh, firstly, uh, I wish you uh, and your, your team and all the viewers a very happy Dantiras and, and a very joyous festive season ahead. Okay. Uh, getting back to uh, uh, how, how we are looking at markets, I think we're in a position where uh, there are two things happening. One is you don't have too much of valuation support. Growth is crawling. Okay, um, uh, margins are are around a median, and this is for a broad, broad spectrum of of uh, businesses that are there. Okay, so there's no valuation support, and we heading into the last six months of the year uh, where where global growth is also being a, a little anemic and not supportive at all. So in all cases, our sense is that the market will grind upwards. Okay, it will be flat to grinding upwards uh, simply because we are probably at the best position in our in our financial uh, in, in our financial position both at the corporate level and and probably somewhere at the at the government level compared to the rest of the world. So any large down cycle, I think it gives us an opportunity because there's no solvency risk on the table. Uh, unlike it was in 13, 14, 15. Uh, and probably sometime during COVID where uh, the market got spooked because demand just collapsed. I don't think any of, any of that is happening. So our view is that market will grind up first. We have no valuation support. Valuations are very, very fair. Uh, but if growth kicks in, I think we are in the best position to capture uh, India and corporate India and, and some of the re region companies are in the best place to capture this kind of growth whenever it does happen. Mm. Uh, Kenneth, hi. Uh, good morning and season's greetings to you. So if you feel that this market will continue to grind upwards, maybe it won't be a pole vault or a rocket upwards, but a slow grind up, then uh, what will work in this grind? The same themes that have done well so far, which is capital goods, PSUs, basically the, the whole industrial complex, or will it be, say, you know, a time for the revival for banks or maybe consumers? So it's an interesting one. Um, uh, for, for a very long time, um, uh, Consumers never gave us valuation support and uh, and had, had reasonable amount of growth. Now, when I say reasonable amount of growth, it was high single digits to low uh, low double digit volume growth, right? Uh, but they traded uh, in they, they traded at a valuation which was uh, 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 which to us uh, didn't make much of sense. Now, when I look at the broader part of the entire market and what's been doing well, which is the gap towards the industrial complex. Uh, valuations have now merged or almost merged out there. Okay. So, so probably I'm not so much biased to any one part of the market as a whole. I still think consumption as a, as a demand factor will, will grind and that also will, uh, will be low. And that also at the bottom end of the entire, uh, uh, population pyramid. Okay. Uh, so, so there is reasonable amount of stress. Uh, at the bottom end of the pyramid. The top end of the pyramid consumption is not really so much of a challenge uh, at this point in time. So valuations being fair, I think it's going to be a very, very mixed bag. Uh, consumption is back on the table for us, uh, especially if you go stock picking into individual businesses. I'd be a little, um, um, little cautious on the industrial complex because some of these, uh, uh, some of these valuations just don't, some of these valuations don't make sense. It just seem to be an allocation trade for a lot of money coming into the coming into the marketplace at this point in time. All right. Uh, hi, Kenneth. Uh, good morning. You know, I would like to ask you about the IT and banking space, the, uh, you know, the larger themes and the pillars of the market. But let's talk, since we're in Diwali, it's festive season, let's talk about the alcohol beverage uh, space. You know, you've spoken about it in the past, the tremendous potential. And I think Radhiko Kaitan and uh, Global Spirits, I think those are a couple of stocks that you all had in your portfolio. 
could you tell us how much more is there in this team and what do you like? You know, as we speak, United Spirits came out with a set of numbers. I don't think the management like uh, the street like the commentary as well. That stock's down close to 6%. Yet Sula Vinyas is sounding very, very optimistic as well. So your take on this space and what do you like? So, uh, Nigel, break this up into two parts of the market. One is the top end of the market where consumption is reasonably buoyant, and at the bottom end of the, and at the bottom end of the base pyramid where, mar where the market continues to struggle. Right. So volumes are great. Um, I mean, if you look at the Indian um, statistics in um, in consumption of of, uh, of alcohol in beverages, we we rank definitely in the top five percentile of the world in per capita consumption. Right. So I wouldn't expect too much of volume growth coming in that part of the world or that part of the industry. What we essentially look for is uh, which company can premiumize uh, and and take the uh, consumer uh, to the next level of uh, of pricing. Uh, and that's been a that's been commentary by every single management that is there in the uh, in the uh, in this space. Uh, and all product launches are happening at a at a premium or a super premium level. And the volumes in that place has also started giving off. When it comes to the bottom end of the market and when it comes to the industrial alcohol market, which is essentially the ethanol piece, look, uh, they've caught in a catch-22 situation. One is uh, your, your raw material prices are variable and your selling price is fixed. Okay, And that's putting an enormous amount of pressure on margins. Though volumes exist, enormous amount of pressure on margins, and the companies are not getting compensated for the risk they're taking on putting up uh, the significant amount of capex on the table. Now we just have to go out there and look for solvent businesses because this tide will turn. Uh, timing this is going to be uh, a little difficult, but I think there's a trade out there. Uh, it might just take some time to do, uh, to to, uh, uh, to to wait on this uh, this trade. Uh okay. Uh, Kenneth, uh, another area which you've been bullish on is the QSR space, right? Uh, but it's it's not really, uh, this this underlying down trading, whatever you want to say, I mean, one category does well, the other does not. Uh, demand trends have been a little weakish. Uh, do you still kind of holding on to your positions there? And uh, what's the latest thought, thought process on QSR? So I don't see any demand visibility in this part of the world, in this part of the market. But if I just put all the industries together, all the companies together, I think they're trading at a fair market capitalization for the size of opportunity that exists. You have to pick and choose as to where to allocate capital in this uh, in this industry. So it's something that is always always going to be there on the uh, on, um, uh, on on the radar. Um, it's a matter of timing, but this seems to be a little more back ended than I initially thought. Uh, Kenneth, I just want to, you know, go back to that point you were making on industrials. That was a very interesting thought that money is coming in just because there needs to be maybe allocation to the sector and you're not too comfortable with valuations. Can you expand on that? You've seen cycles here. The last time these stocks were doing what they're doing today is maybe, you know, 10, 15 years back. Mm -hmm. What would be a, a more reasonable valuation range to keep in mind, given that uh, everybody is saying the growth prospects are, are still looking good? So, so what happens when money comes into a trade like this is that they need to buy the stock and they keep allocating money to it till, um, and, and it just appears that uh, earnings will be back-ended and that could be the case. And liquidity could drive, uh, uh, liquidity uh, coming into this industry could drive stock prices and keep inflating the price earning multiples. Now you saw something similar trade between, uh, I think, 18 and 19 in a very different part of the market till it all corrected and reversed itself. Right. So, so there's, there is a uh, there is an investment style that does that too, um, which is essentially uh, pick up visibility uh, visibility of growth uh, and allocate money out there, irrespective of what valuations are. Uh, that is not really our, the style that we we tend to uh, tend to work with. Uh, we like something which is a little more affordable because at the end of the day, we are buying earnings at a certain price. Uh, and 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 that's why I think that part of the market can wait for a little while. You will get a corrective. The broad structure is still in place because remember, this is not an India-specific trade. The glo globally, uh, the marketplace is going through a capex cycle, so the opportunity is significantly large. We'll have to pick and choose uh, which opportunity to 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 go with. Uh, of course, the entire value chain around the power, uh, power uh, renewables, uh, uh, renewables 
uh, transmission sector is reasonable in large. You just have to wait a little bit of time, let them correct sideways or wait till learnings take in. And there should be a fair number uh, which is acceptable where we could we could uh, put a trade in. There is no specific price earning multiple that we're actually looking at in this business. We just have to look at it a little bit more uh, sure. in our comfort region. Yes. Before we can allocate gap. Okay. All right. Got that. Uh, Kenneth, thank you very much. Great chatting with you this morning. Thanks for joining in. You have a fabulous day, a good weekend, and a good good festive season as well. Thanks for joining Thank in. Very much. Have a nice day. <laughs>